Glory to the Lord God Almighty, the maker and the possessor of heaven and earth. I am David Agbona, and this is David Agbona Ministries. And this is our communion and anointing service. In this service, we're going to pray briefly. Thereafter, we will hear the word of God. Then we will take our holy communion and I will be praying on your anointing oil and on mine too. So let's begin by giving God thanks for what he's done in our lives. Thanking him for those things you see and those things you do not see. Just give him thanks right now. Father, we give you praise. We rejoice. We give you thanks, Lord, for what you have done. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for your guidance. Thank you for putting to shame and to flight them that seek our hurt. Thank you, Lord, for making all things work together for our good. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for showing us where we are erring, that we may repent of it and grow in Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your protection. Thank you, Lord, for helping us in times of challenge and in times where there are no challenges. Thank you for guiding us as we make decisions. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the light of your word. We are grateful, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to confess your sins unto the Lord and ask him for mercy. What you have said, what you have thought, what you have done, Talk to the Lord about it. Ask him for mercy and forgiveness. The Bible says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us. So God will forgive you because you confessed your sins, acknowledging the wrongdoing. God will forgive you. So talk to him right now and ask him for mercy. Ask the Lord for mercy. He will forgive God will forgive you. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy. And as you ask the Lord for mercy, also forgive those who have offended you. Whether you consider them worthy of your forgiveness or not, forgive them so that God will forgive you. Lord, we ask for your mercy. Cleanse our hearts, O Lord, of all bitterness and unforgiveness and malice. Lord, have mercy on us. Forgive, Lord, the foolish speaking, the immoralities, the wickedness, the unkindness. Forgive the rebellion. Forgive, Lord God, the uncleanness and transgressions that we have committed. Have mercy on us. Cleanse us with the blood of Jesus. Strengthen us, Lord. Strengthen us. Give us a hatred for sin and a love for righteousness. We thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. Now I want you to ask the Lord to speak to you today. Ask the Lord to speak to you. To teach you. To heal you. Talk to him. Ask for his help. Ask for his help. Father, please strengthen us. Teach us. Feed us with your word. Feed us with your word, Lord. We give you thanks. We give you thanks, Lord. In this service, confirm your word. Speak to us. Stretch forth your hand, Lord, to confirm your word with signs and wonders. Father, I pray that the veil of covering that has covered the nations, that has covered the people, will be torn apart in this service. 
And may everyone that comes in contact with this administration be set free of every bondage, receive deliverance and healing, breakthroughs and blessings. I pray, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And so today, we are going to look at the topic, Knowing God. Knowing God. What does it mean to know God? How do we know God? We'll start with the scripture in the book of Daniel chapter 11, verse 32. Knowing God. What is the advantage of knowing God? Knowing God is not a mental awareness of the existence of the creator. Knowing God is a relationship. Knowing God is a relationship with the Most High. That is what the knowledge of God is means. Let's look at Daniel chapter 11 verse 32. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he, referring to the Antichrist, shall he corrupt by flatteries. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. The people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. So there is a strength to do exploits. There is a strength to stand your ground. There is a strength to overcome the battles ahead. There is a strength To do signs and wonders. Remember Jesus. When he resurrected. He said. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall heal the sick. If they take in any de uh, deadly thing. It shall not harm them. He said. These signs shall follow them that believe. These Signs. So these great signs are to follow anyone that believes. These signs are not for the apostle, prophet, pastor, evangelist, and teacher only. These signs are not for clergy. Because in reality, there is no clergy in the Bible. We are all ministers of God in various capacities. And so every one of you is designed, configured, manufactured to be a carrier of power. We have been created to carry the presence of God. That is why the Bible says our bodies are the temples of the Holy Spirit. We are to carry his presence. And where the presence of God is, you can be sure his power will be present. His power will be present. And so when you are carrying the presence of God, you are carrying power. Everyone who believes, irrespective of gender, irrespective of age, height, economic status, educational background, societal uh, level, or grouping, you are to walk with signs and wonders following you. The signs and wonders may, could 
are all that Jesus mentioned. Jesus said, He that believes in me, the works I do, he shall do also, and greater works than these, because I go to my Father. He didn't say, the pastors that believe in me. He said, he that believes in me, anyone that believes in Jesus Christ, will do what he did. Anyone that believes in Jesus Christ will do what he did when he walked the face of this earth physically. And so do not limit God's work in and through you by telling yourself you are not a clergyman, you are not a pastor, you are not an evangelist. You could be a praying mother doing great signs and wonders. And so that somebody is doing signs and wonders does not make him a pastor. Because there are some churches that the moment they see somebody demonstrating uh, the power of God, they quickly position that person or then that person a pastor. That is wrong. Signs and wonders are not for pastors. They are for everyone that believes. So a person who is not called to the pastoral office can do signs and wonders. So don't begin to put people in positions that they don't have the calling for. Signs and wonders, the power of God at work is for everyone that believes. So they that know their God. And knowing God is a committed relationship with him. Knowing God is you walking in his ways. Knowing God is you fellowshipping with him. You are supposed to be a carrier of this knowledge of God, of the fellowship with the Father. So how do we um, know God? Let's look at some ways to know God. Number one, seeking God in study of his word and prayer. Seeking God in the study of his word and prayer. We are going to look at Proverbs chapter 2 from verse 1 to 7. Proverbs chapter 2 from verse 1 to 7. I will read. My son, if you will receive my words and hide my commandments with you, so that you incline your ear unto wisdom and apply your heart to understanding. Yes, if you cry after knowledge and lift up your voice for understanding. If you seek her as silver and search for her as hidden treasures, then you shall understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom out of his mouth and for the Lord gives wisdom out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He lays up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. So we see that when you seek God, when you desire to know God, when you desire to know God's will, Wisdom, the Bible says the beginning of wisdom is the, is the fear of God. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. And wisdom is actually manifesting God's view of things. Because God is the giver of wisdom. The wisdom Satan is using is corrupted, but it was given to him by God. He corrupted that wisdom. Corrupting the wisdom is that is using the wisdom to destroy. That's the corruption in his wisdom. But he still has that wisdom. And so, God is the giver of all wisdom. 
seeking God, serving Him in prayers, in study, you build your relationship with Him. And as you spend time in the presence of God, studying the Word of God, you develop a, a discernment for the voice of God that you can recognize God speaking through people, through situations. The reason people are running from one so-called prophet to the other, of which these are diviners and sorcerers, those that are uh, prophesying according to how much a person brings and prophesying when uh, they feel like that's not of God. Prophetic unction is real. Prophecies are real. But prophecies come at the initiation of the Holy Spirit. Not because somebody wants to just entertain a crowd. But people that are running looking for who will prophesy upon, uh, to them are usually people that don't have a good relationship with God. They do not operate in the knowledge of God. They don't want to know God for themselves. They just want to use God for their purpose. So number two, number two is righteous living, which we see in verse seven. Verse seven of Proverbs chapter two, it says, he lays up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. God lays up wisdom for they that are righteous. They that choose to live right, God will teach them. They that choose to please God in their lives, God will teach them. They that choose to be faithful to God, God will teach them. God will reveal things to those who are upright. God will give right, uh, wisdom to the righteous. Number three, obedience. When you obey, God will reveal. God rewards your obedience with increase in wisdom and knowledge. God rewards your obedience with a greater knowledge of him. You will know God more when you obey God more. So when you obey God, God reveals more to you. When you obey him, he reveals more of himself to you. The Bible says in Psalm 25 verse 14, the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him and he will show them his covenant. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. So if you want to dwell in the secret place of the Most High, that is the place of obedience. The more you obey God's word, the more he reveals himself to you. Number four, meekness. Meekness is humility. Meekness is personal humility and a teachable spirit. When a person is meek, the person is teachable and humble. When someone is meek, it's a mixture of teachableness and humility. The Bible says that Moses was the meekest man in his time. And Moses knew God the most in his time from what we see in scriptures. He had a close relationship with God. God said a regular prophet, he will, he will speak to that prophet in dreams and visions. But Moses was not so. Moses was one. The Lord said he spoke to face to face as a man will speak with his friend. 
So we see that Moses had intimate knowledge of God beyond other people in his time. And what was the quality of Moses? The Bible says he was the meekest man. So when you are meek, you are teachable, you are humble, God is pleased to reveal more things about himself to you. So this time of your life, use it to increase in the knowledge of God. Lay down your impressions, your attitudes, your presumptions, and be ready to learn. When God teaches you, most of the time it goes against everything you thought you knew. When God opens things to you, you realize that you were taught some errors. You realize that you have believed some errors. But if you say no, I don't agree with this. Wisdom is the principal thing. The Bible says with wisdom you make war. So if you want to have the knowledge of God, you want to have the relationship with God, be meek, be obedient, live a righteous life, study the word of God with prayerfulness, study his word with prayerfulness. Be prayerful as you study his word. One thing I'll tell you about righteousness, because some of you may say, but righteousness is the same as obeying God's word. Righteousness goes beyond obeying God's word. Righteousness is to hate evil and to love good. Righteousness is to hate evil and to love good. I want you to thank the Lord for his word today. Thank him that he has spoken to you. He has spoken to me. Give him thanks. Thank him. Tell him you want to know him more and more. Tell him you want to know him more and more. And if there's anyone here who has not given this is our life to Christ. Accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. This is an opportunity for you. While the rest of you are praying to God, talking to God about your life, if you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, I want you to pray. Very simple. You can use your own words or you can repeat after me. Just, uh, I will say the words you repeat after me or you can use your own words. The Bible says, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord can be saved. It can be very short. It can be, Jesus, save me. Jesus, I surrender. You have given your life to Jesus Christ. You have accepted him as Lord and Savior. So, let's pray. Lord God Almighty, I repent of my sins. I ask for your forgiveness. I confess and accept Jesus Christ, your Son, as my Lord and Savior. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Keep me holy and righteous till the day I meet you. Thank you, my Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. You pray that prayer, you're born again. I encourage you to be baptized with water, being dipped into water and brought out. Any body of water, river, stream, pool. I once saw in a prison, someone was being baptized with a drum. In a drum. He was in the drum, there was water. They just dipped him into the drum. He had to bend down and then brought him out. He was baptized.
even a clean bathtub. But being dipped in water and brought out is important as the symbol of your death with Christ and resurrection with him. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for everyone participating in this service. Lord, help us to be strong. Fill our hearts with the knowledge of God. Lord, reign in our lives and glorify your name in us and through us. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So get your communion materials ready. If you want to contact me, you want to contact me or this ministry, uh, you can reach me by WhatsApp and Telegram. There's a WhatsApp and Telegram number. I'm going to call that number. It's for WhatsApp, it's for Telegram. There's no Telegram channel. It's a number. Plus two, three, four. That's a country code. Right? Seven, zero, three, three, four, three, six, eight. And then by email, David Eichbonner Ministries at gmail.com. Aigbona is spelled A-I-G-B-O-N-A. That is David Aigbona Ministries at gmail.com. This channel, David Aigbona, is available on Rumble, odc.com, BitChute, Brighton, Locals.com, Gab.com, IconnectFX, we are on SoundCloud. You have the podcast on SoundCloud. And TikTok. We are also on TikTok. I encourage you to follow me on the alternate channels that I just mentioned, not just on YouTube and Facebook. If you are on YouTube, fine. But be sure to follow on these other platforms because there are some teachings and messages that I cannot put on YouTube because of their censorship. Same as Facebook. So take your bread. On the night Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread, he gave thanks. He said, take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. He also took the cup, he gave thanks. He blessed it and he gave it to them. He said, take, drink. This is my blood, of the, which is shed for the remission of sins in the new covenant. As often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. And so we are taking communion in, com in obedience to his command. The Bible says that when we take communion, we proclaim his death till he comes. We are proclaiming his death and we are invoking what his death brought us. His death brought us life, brought us deliverance, brought us healing, brought us oneness with God. God dwells in us and we dwell in God. And so that is what we do. This drink symbolic. The bread also is symbolic. So lift up your bread, bake without yeast, and a drink. Water, fruit juice, non-alcoholic wine, or wine, even if it's alcoholic but make sure it's a little let's give thanks father we thank you for every bread and drink lifted up to you we thank you lord jesus we thank you holy spirit in obedience to your word we break bread proclaiming that jesus christ yahushua hamashiach he came he died resurrected and he lives in us, and we are sustained by him. Lord, we invoke the, the power of the covenant. We invoke the blessings of the covenant in our lives. Let everything not in the body of Jesus, which is in us, be destroyed, be removed. And let everything that we lack 
be given to us from the body of Jesus. So Jesus is our source and sustainer. Let sickness, disease, failures, confusion, oppression, possession, bondage be broken off of our lives and let your healing power, prosperity, strength, wisdom, guidance come to us and do abide with us. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. So you break bread. The Bible says the disciples went from house to house breaking bread. The disciples went house to house, breaking bread, and they were doing it often. And so you should do it often. You can do it at home, with yourself alone. You can do it with your family and friends. It must not be in a church building. And it must not be done by a pastor. Take your oil. Please do share this video, download and save it offline so that you can watch it again and again. Feel free to upload my videos to your own social media platforms. I want the gospel to spread. Lift up your oil. Father, I thank you for every oil lifted unto you. I pray you turn this ordinary oil into holy anointing oil that your power will flow through it. Your word says that the disciples went anointing the sick and the sick were healed. Your word says if in James chapter 5, if anyone is sick, let the elders anoint him with oil and he will recover. Your word says in Psalm 45 verse 7, you love what's right, despising evil. Therefore God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness above your fellows. In Isaiah chapter 10, your word says, because of the anointing, the yoke is broken off of you. Lord, may your protection, favor, healing, deliverance. May your presence come upon us, even as we are anointed with oil. And as we anoint our homes, our, uh, whatever we anoint, we dedicate it unto you. It is consecrated unto you. Thank you, Lord. Whoever is anointed with this oil, may they receive the blessings that come with the anointing. Whatsoever is anointed with this oil is consecrated unto you. Thank you, Father. Your word says, touch not my anointed, do my prophets no harm. We anoint ourselves and we thank you for your power at work in us. In Jesus' name. Amen. You anoint yourself. Thank you, Father. Thank you for participating in this service. I look forward to seeing you again. I always upload or go live on Sundays and Fridays. On Sundays, Believers Communion and Anointing Service, where I minister just like this. And then on Fridays, it's Prayer, Healing, and Deliverance. We pray together, I minister healing and deliverance to people. So be sure that every Sunday and every Friday, content will be uploaded. And during the week, I also upload sometimes. May Yahweh bless you and keep you. May Yahweh cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May Yahweh lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. See you again.